welcome to the garden. Today I'm going to be feeding our compost pile. I like to balance out my food scraps with dried leaves because your pile is alive. It's basically a big stomach. So we want to balance out that carbon so that it's a nice healthy diet. As an end goal, we want to get about 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. And that doesn't mean you need to add 30 times the amount of leaves as you do food scraps because food scraps are already at about 10 to 1 carbon to nitrogen. The carbon is what really feeds those microbes and that nitrogen is that high energy decomposition. Green grass clippings are about 15 to 1 carbon to nitrogen and when they're dry they're about 20 to 1. I usually do about equal parts dried grass and dried leaves. So we'll feed that to our pile. Then we can add things from the garden. I've got a few rotten tomatoes here. I've got an apple core. Don't worry about the seeds. That's all just going to get turned into the pile. Even if they do sprout, you just turn the pile over. That incorporates a bunch of oxygen. We want to keep it aerobic that just means it decomposes in the presence of air. So we're going to keep it smelling nice and clean by keeping it aerobic. That's another great reason to add leaves. There's tons of air when you incorporate the leaves. I actually like to shred them up. That way they can mix in really easily and they break down a little bit faster. Dried leaves really are the ideal candidate. They're usually at about 60 to 1 carbon to nitrogen. They do an excellent job of balancing out those food scraps. And you don't have to worry about the calculations. It's actually really simple. So when in doubt, just do about equal parts brown to green material. Another incredible carbon source is sawdust. This is closer to 500 parts of carbon for every part of nitrogen, so this really goes a long way. So we'll feed this guy about a handful of our sawdust. Now all that carbon is really going to feed those microbes. And to give them a boost, you can give them a little bit of sugar in the form of some flat soda. Keep in mind, any sugars are going to feed the beneficial bacteria as well as the bad bacteria. But as long as you have a healthy pile, you can compost just about anything. This old rotten potato, perfect. This old nasty pepper, perfect for compost. Banana peels are an excellent source of potassium. Eggshells are a great source of calcium. I even compost things like bones and meats. As long as you do it sparingly, this adds really nice phosphorus. That's a little bit more rare when it comes to vegetables. Most commercial fertilizers use bone meal, which is just ground up bones, or fish emulsion, which is just ground fish. Kind of gross, but it adds that rare phosphorus. It's not very prevalent in vegetables. It's a little bit higher in beans and seeds. So I'm actually going to give them a handful of these pumpkin seeds too. A little dragonfly. We'll try to avoid him. But anything from the kitchen, stale chips, flat soda, that'll actually feed those bacteria. So our piles had plenty to eat. Now we'll give them a nice cup of coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are a nice consistency, so they really finely mix in. They add plenty of nitrogen, and they create a nice body to the compost. So to balance out all those vegetable scraps from the kitchen, I'm gonna be adding tons of dried leaves, and clippings from the garden. Dried leaves are definitely my favorite carbon source for the pile. I've experimented with sticks and even logs, but even small sticks like this take about two years to break down fully. The leaves will break down in one season, so they are just ideal. 
And as long as you keep it aerated by turning the pile every now and then, you should have nice finished compost in only a few months. Mm. It smells earthy, just like soil. And this is just incredible for the garden. This is an absolute gardener's dream. About half of the things that I used to throw in the garbage, I now throw in the compost pile. So I challenge you to keep a little bin, something like this little ice cream bin, right next to your garbage can. Anytime you throw away something that's a paper product, like a tissue, or even leaves from your indoor plants, that can all go into your compost pile. Anything organic, like fingernail clippings, or if you cut your own hair, that's great compost material. Basically anything that was once alive is fair game for your compost pile. And even things like cardboard and newspaper can be used as a carbon source in a pinch. So for every handful of vegetable scraps, you want to add about two handfuls of dried leaves. That'll balance out your pile to that ratio of about 30 to 1, carbon to nitrogen. That way the microbes stay the most active. You can go a little bit higher on your nitrogen, but the pile might smell a little bit. If you're a little bit high on your carbon, your pile's just going to be a little bit slower, a little bit cooler. When it's really active, it'll actually generate heat. There's all sorts of worms and millipedes and isopods doing really great work breaking all these food scraps down into usable nutrients. So I hope you give this a grow in your garden. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.